Um, thanks everyone for joining us here today. My name is David Carroll and I'm the Executive Director for the Greater Englewood Chamber of Commerce. First of all, I wanted to state that we could not have done this without the help of our city. Inglewood has been a wonderful sponsor and we are thankful for them for that. So thank you, Inglewood. Um, we do have uh, Darren Hollinsworth, City of uh, Inglewood's Economic Development Manager here that we'd like to uh, start off with a couple of words for us. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Hope you can hear me okay. Yes, thank you. So David and uh, to all the members of the Greater Inglewood Chamber of Commerce, thank you so much for hosting these webinars. They're so informative and so timely uh, during this time and so useful. I wanted to bring forward a couple of uh, issues that might be of importance to businesses today. The city has just launched as of noon today, the um, patio standards for restaurants looking to expand um, in the, whether it be in, in, in front of their business or make use of, of parking in front of their business, or even if that's a public parking lot or the paseos, anything of that nature, the city is very supportive of helping our restaurants, bars, cafes, et cetera, opening smoothly. Um, and we have the ability to, to do a 48 hour turnaround, two, two business day turnaround for these permits uh, without the liquor license, of course, but the city's portion of that, uh, we can do a very quick turnaround. We're gonna waive all fees uh, for a permit. Um, and so this is to encourage and, and invite uh, restaurants to open smoothly and easily. The city also has a small um, grant to help businesses that have been closed due to the, due to the uh, uh, governor's orders. Um, so it's a $500 marketing and reopening grant. So any business that's asking for assistance can use these dollars for marketing related expenses or anything related to PPE to reopen their business. So if there's uh, requirements for state signage or any standards associated with uh, reopening, the city's uh, marketing grant can help, help with that. Uh, please make application early. Right now those funds are limited to 25 projects. Um, so we hope to, we hope to get um, um, those dollars out and working within the community very shortly. We also have in uh, the program is still available to businesses that have uh, not applied for a $4,000 um, recovery and assistance grant. Um, first time applicants may apply for $4,000. Those that have previously received two can also apply for a total of four. So they would get a, a, a backfill for $2,000. All that information is available on the city's COVID recovery and response link at the top of the city's website. I know David has done it and the chamber has done an excellent job of sharing this information out with members of the business community as well. David, thank you so much for having us today and I look forward to this discussion. Thanks, Darren. Thank you. Well, as Darren mentioned, uh, tomorrow uh, is the start of our restaurant community that's going to be able to open and dine in service. And as long as they can follow the Safer at Home guidelines released by the governor this past Friday, they're able to open. And whether you are a restaurant, retail, manufacturing, or personal services, one thing that all the guidelines have in common is this idea that you need to provide signage to not only help your employees, but in help your customers understand the rules and regulations of uh, Safer at Home. And so what does all that mean? Um, we've asked a couple of local businesses to uh, come here and help us uh, maybe explain some options or share some options that uh, as we move forward. And so when I was trying to wrap my head around all these options, I called uh, Tyler and, and Barb Linval of Harmonic Media, and they shared some ideas of, uh, for all types of businesses. And so I asked them if they would be willing to share those ideas with you uh, to kind of visualize what's possible. So uh, please let me introduce Tyler of Harmonic Media. Hi, thanks, David. I just wanted to also say thanks for having us. It's a, it's a wonderful uh, informational piece that you're putting together and thanks to the city and uh, the Chamber of Inglewood as well. Um, so we've had, like you said, David, not uh, the, the guidelines with a lot of this have been fairly loose uh, statements such as, yes, you need to have signage, but not specific as far as what you need to have and where. Um, so we've really been relying on our uh, customer base to kind of explain 
their unique individual need um, for what their business is, the size, you know, how many people they have coming in and out of there, um, as well as, uh, you know, just kind of navigating weekly, daily uh, updates as far as um, uh, kind of provisions go. So uh, just recently, actually, just before this, I had gotten off the phone with a, um, a restaurant that was, was also eager to uh, open up. Um, they're, they're waiting until Saturday until they're ready, but I thought maybe I'd share that story first and then um, we could look at a little, uh, some kind of general products that, uh, that we had put together for uh, some of our customer base. Um, so the restaurant that I spoke with today, uh, we had come to a good kind of understanding of, you know, how their flow is going to work. Um, they had some interesting thoughts because they're going to still continue to do uh, take out uh, food as well as, um, you know, start to introduce some, some in establishment dining. Um, so we're making some signs for them that are just kind of inexpensive A-frame type signs for uh, the outside of their building. Um, and so they want to kind of partition people into two groups, people who are there to pick up their food uh, and people who would like to um, sit down and eat. Uh, so it kind of started with that, you know, two groups of people. Um, they're going to greet everybody uh, outside. Uh, to start, and then um, we've made some arrows, or we're going to be making some arrows for them for just uh, traffic flow for not only um, guests, but uh, the staff as well, so everybody can kind of keep moving in the same direction, um, kind of aid in uh, not congregating uh, too many people in one spot. Um, so that was really cool. Uh, they also were making some uh, some decals for all of their tables that they, they do have available. Um, that has a QR code that would go to a uh, to a menu basically on your phone. Um, so I thought that was a really cool idea that they had. And so um, then that way, you know, uh, we're not sharing menus. They can sit down, they can scan the code, they can check out whatever it is they want on their phone. Um, obviously, the servers will be wearing masks. And so pretty simple, I think, approach. Uh, but they were, um, it, it definitely, I think the point I'm trying to, to make is it was, it was, it, it, we had to have sat down with them um, to kind of understand how their business is and how their flow is and sort of what their interpretation of the rules were. So, um, <clears throat> so anyways, I thought that was kind of an interesting story. Um, as far as, uh, you know, other businesses go, other retail establishments, it's been a lot of the same, a lot of uh, floor, <coughs> excuse me, floor and wall uh, decals that, um, you know, tell people where to sit because it's, it's seeming like the, um, not either or necessarily, but, you know, if you're, if you are congregating, uh, wear a mask, if it's not, then stay apart sort of thing. And that's at least kind of what I've been reading into with a lot of these guidelines. So, uh, anyways, we're, we're making a lot of, uh, a lot of floor and wall type decals. Um, and if I could share maybe my screen for a second here, uh, we had put together, I mean, let's see how good my technology is today. Um, we had put together a little packet uh, just based on some, can everybody see my screen okay? Yeah, okay, cool. So we had put together this little packet of, um, you know, visually what a, uh, you know, different environments may look like as they need to reopen. Um, and so, you know, this kind of just goes through, you know, what a, uh, what a, a retail environment may look, may look like uh, as far as, you know, some floor decals, obviously, you know, different shapes, different sizes, different information. This can all be sort of customized, um, you know, reminders about, you know, don't touch things if you don't need to, um, you know, some different type of counter graphics. Uh, and so, you know, it kind of moves into, you know, these quick service restaurants like we were talking about, um, you know, so this would be more of like a, you know, uh, quick service restaurant. So this is, again, just some, some you know, larger wall graphics, some, you know, seating arrangements that could be applied to the tables, storefront, you know, what's in the counter, the floor. Um, and then we just kind of keep, keep going through here to, you know, restaurant, like a drive through type of restaurant. Um, same sort of stuff, you know, some different type of exit signage, entry exit signage. Uh, here's some commercial buildings. So this, you know, maybe for uh, the the chamber's office there, if you've got people coming and going, we've seen a multitude of different uh, kind of DIY scenarios with people with, you know, painter's tape and uh, things on the floor. So this just kind of helps for, 
you know, classing that up a little bit. Um, and then we've got, you know, some, some thoughts for elevators, you know, which are kind of interesting of how to, uh, you know, keep people as far away as we can, um, while still using, a uh, using some of these, these features in these, um, office buildings. Um, and a lot of this, again, is just kind of keeping people moving, um, and not congregating. Uh, so, you know, oil and gas, um, really just a multitude of, you know, what's what a restroom may look like. Uh, for people kind of coming in and out distance, you know, stand here, walk here, don't use this, you know, kind of separating out. You see how they've separated out the faucets to use. So, you know, just kind of continuing to encourage that idea. Um, uh, here's like some, you know, some high, uh, high traction applications for, um, you know, if you've got wheelchairs or, you know, other, other things besides feet uh, that are walking. Um, and then there's just kind of goes into some some different product information. So we really felt like this helped uh, sort of visualize what um, in an establishment may look like. I know it's kind of overwhelming, I think, for a lot of businesses to try to think through what they need to do. Um, again, to, you know, David, to your point of, uh, you know, a lot of these businesses not really having a ton of extra money right now because we've all been closed for uh, a number of weeks and months. So um, we tried to put together something that was uh, both economical and practical um, for a, a variety of different businesses. But uh, again, kind of the, the nuts and bolts of it is just, um, you know, keeping people moving. And um, when you're close, wear a mask. When you're not, stay apart. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. Uh, I mean, that's why I really asked Tyler to show this to all of you, um, and again, we're recording this, and so we can put this out for later reference, but when he showed me these diagrams, this was something that, um, I mean, just the, the one that still sticks with me is the, the elevator diagram that you showed where you had people that had, you know, maybe spaces in each uh, area of the elevator, and what that looked, yeah, right there, mm -hmm. and what that looks like, and so someone that has maybe a larger commercial property and trying to understand how, you know, surely in elevators we get close, but I love those those placemakers to say, if we all stand in corners, we can still move forward and, and still do our business in that way. And so mm -hmm. that's perfect. Yeah, and this this will be available to anybody, uh, you know, should they want it or uh, uh, to use it for, for their type of application. So um, you can get in contact with me or, or David. And obviously they can contact you guys. And as you said at the beginning, uh, even if this sparks ideas, uh, sit down and maybe explain their unique situation and, and you guys can take care of them. Absolutely. Yeah. Like again, each, each situation is unique and we would almost, almost encourage that just because it's, uh, it's important to understand the space. Um, I think a lot of what we do is really understanding the, the need and the, the space we've got to, to utilize. So uh, definitely happy to be used as a, a resource, um, either in person or, or over a call for uh, anybody that may need it. Great. Well, thank, thank you, Tyler. Yeah, let me get my really screen. Appreciate it. And we'll, uh, sure. When we put this video out for everybody, we will have uh, a little underscore of um, Tyler's information, Harmonic Media, if you don't have that already. I mean, local business, you've probably already heard with them. So thank you so thank much. You. Thank you, David. Uh, so our, our next presenter, um, you may recognize from some of our previous events, Anna Shepard is the owner of S Signal Graphics. Anna has been, um, even at the very beginning, she had shared ideas on COVID-19 signage with us and uh, I think as far back as is even April. And so uh, we asked her if she wouldn't mind just sharing some options of, of standard signage as well as custom signage that can also be done for your business. So thanks, Anna. Can you all hear me? Good. Okay. So yeah, Tyler, I completely agree with all of that. I mean, these are custom applications. I tried, spent hours trying to put a package together where my customer could get one of this, one of this, one of this, one of this, and put it up here, here, and here, and have it all covered. But each restaurant's different, each business is different. So I 100% agree. Consultations are really helpful. Um, but then 
if you don't mind, I'd like to actually go through my understanding of the Safer at Home guidelines and then what a sample of the signage might look like. Like Tyler said, we don't all have budgets for this. Some of the stuff is accessible. There's resources online, print ready stuff online for you to use right now. But most importantly, that we keep each other safe and get back to business safely. So let's see if I can share my screen. All right. Can you all see my screen? Yeah. Okay, cool. So COVID-19 signage, safer at home. So let's start with the work, work sites. So my understanding of the guidelines are that we are to assign a workplace coordinator. What's the point in this? You assign a workplace coordinator and you give them the information. You give them the guidelines, the resources in case somebody gets sick. You put them in charge, um, give them a small booklet, create a digital file and displace uh, the, the resources to everybody so everybody's got it, everybody understands. Maintain six foot distance. Honestly, if you've left your house at all, you've seen the, the floor decals, you know what they look like. Um, something that when I was reviewing this came up to me is I've kind of got a tight hallway. So we understand what six foot looks like with the customer walking into my store, but how do I handle that tight hallway with my employees? So um, other things to think about. I've seen people put the, like, uh, pool noodles out. A pool noodle is six foot. You know, you've seen people tie them around themselves and that's six foot. What kind of reminders can you establish um, in your store uh, for, for your employees and not just your customers? Okay, so the next is to post signage for employees on customers on good hygiene. No guidance on what that looks like. There's a lot of stuff out there. Um, I refer back to the CDC. They have print ready files, eight and a half by 11s, 11 17s. Um, and then adhere a reminder to your, to your bathroom on good hand washing practices. You can see the one on the screen there that people have put lyrics to. Make it enjoyable for your employees. Brand it. Um, put your logo on it if you can. And then discourage shared spaces and avoid gallery of 10 or more. So in most businesses, you're, I mean, besides restaurants, obviously, you're thinking about like the break room. Just put a break room clothes sign up. You could print that out. Um, or you can limit seating, do it with like a sticky back lamination. It can be sanitized, easily removed um, if capacity is increased. And then frequently disconfect, like obviously, right? So how are you going to do that? Um, I put out a thing at Clorox. I asked my customers and my employees to engage and uh, help practice. If you touch something, wipe it down, and uh, creates kind of a collaborative cleaning, sanitizing um, environment. And then implement system monitoring protocols. I feel like this gets talked about less often, but they're advising that we set up a temperature check station um, where an employee or a customer would go through a wellness screening. Do you have a dry cough? Do you have shortness of breath? Have you had a fever? Um, so what does that look like? Maybe you have a laminated sheet where um, you assign a person to take the temperature and ask these questions. Or um, in some cases, many establishments are requiring like a sign-in and a waiver. You've got to keep a record of this. So do you spiral bind it in a book and then you've got it all right there. If somebody comes back to you and asks for contact tracing information, just open up your book and you can kind of go through it that way. Um, I've heard of establishments doing sign-in, um, your name and contact info if they've got to, again, later contact traced. So some of the stuff that we've done um, Coroplast signs marking your parking spot in, in the parking spot for curbside pickup. We've done floor decals for curbside or for temperature check stations, arrows for the flow of traffic, uh, posters of all kinds, decals for virtual waiting rooms. We've seen a lot of those. We're using a virtual waiting room. Call us or text us to check in, fill out your paperwork online, print it at home, bring it in. Um, and then, of course, A frames for limiting the number of customers allowed inside. So the best practices for employees. So require symptomatic employees to stay home. So remember, if you've assigned a coordinator, you've handed out a booklet or a digital file, that coordinator knows exactly what to say to that employee that's now feeling symptomatic. Um, or maybe that symptomatic employee has a booklet of his own that he took home, his or her own, um, that tells him how he can apply for FMLA or um, whatever appropriate resource he needs to, to do there provide flexible schedule, promote telework and phase shifts and breaks, minimize in-person meetings. 
provide hand washing, sanitize stations, um, post those stop the spread of germs CDC poster, know the symptoms, how to wear and remove your cloth uh, face covering poster. Um, it's already there, easy to print and post. Um, and then the Colorado Department has a nice health well check that you can use uh, digitally. Your employees can fill that out, log it in like a Google Docs, and uh, then it's stored there virtually that they're not ill before checking in. You can do that in person again with a spiral bound book. Um, and then you might also consider like labeling tools or office supplies. So we have a shared stapler here. Maybe I, that needs to be my stapler. Um, and it says, or Anna scissors. And then additionally, you can use return address labels and have it marked sanitized or needs cleaned or the date you last touched it or the time it was last wiped down. Um, whatever things that are accessible in the everyday office to keep, um, keep it clean as much as you can. And then again, safety first, disinfect before and after use. We all do that around here. And then to protect your customers. So you're gonna wanna create special hours for your at risk and then update those hours on your front door. Um, we can help you promote that on your website or through social media. Encourage social distancing, use of mask and gloves, offer the hand sanitizer. I've got a three-year-old hand sanitizer is too challenging to say, so he calls it hanitizer. How efficient, I totally agree with him. Sanitizer. So install acrylic sneeze shields. We partnered with a, a local company to make these inexpensive and accessible. If you need one, you can get one for $50. It's a standard size. There's nothing special about it except for that protects you from a sneeze or any um, cost. You can double them up next to each other, or if you want, you can customize them to fit however you need. And then use contactless payments. We've got all that great info from last week's webinar. And then as restaurants are set to reopen, we've been busy doing these single use menus. Tyler, I hadn't heard of that QR code. What a great idea. I love that. Um, it's hard to think about like recycling a single use menu that may have been touched by potentially somebody infected, but you know, we've got to, We've got to be thinking about the technology solutions to cut down on single use menus. There's also like a poly uh, synthetic materials that can be disinfected or ran through a dishwasher. Um, and so I think as budgets increase, I hope that we're starting to use more environmental resources. Um, a cool one we've been doing is um, quality sealed stickers. So they're perforated. Uh, maybe you've seen them from Papa John's, but the quality seal goes over the box for takeout. And then you know if that seal is not broken, that nobody has touched your food at Grubhub or Uber Eats is on its way to you um, for some comfort in that. And then think about offering stickers to screen visitors. They've passed the well check, they've had their temperature checked, give them a sticker that says screen visitors. It's a visible way to look across and make sure that everybody's following these guidelines. Here are some of our other capabilities. Um, I talked about a lot of them. Some of the other ones, we could do marketing and creative as well. So I've got a bulk mail permit. I could do every door direct. We do all of our mailing here in the shop. I've got a really great graphic designer and at affordable prices. Um, and let's get back to business together. That's all. Hey, thank you, Anna. That was great. The one thing I didn't, that, that you just brought up that I wasn't thinking about is just, you know, putting labels on people's equipment i mean there's scissors and all that and and somehow yeah. maybe that helps us not touch those items so much but yeah uh, especially like a manufacturing environment right so right. maybe your everyday office supplies maybe it's not the most suitable but imagine having a, a, a production line you know label the equipment or label it after, after it's been sanitized and handed to you but yeah that's that's great stuff let me see if there's anything else in the chat. Um, just Darren saying, great idea on that QR code. I think, Tyler, that was, that's a aha yeah. moment for all of us, right? I mean, yeah. I just, when we sent out our email this morning on, you know, here are the guidelines, we got two or three people that say, hey, I can print some out for restaurants, but wow, QR code, we don't even have to have that. We don't have to touch it. Yeah, and that was the uh, the idea of the, the restaurant owner, which I also thought was great because they can, um, she brought up a good point of when we're wiping down tables, uh, we can, you know, clean that area as, as well or cl clean that QR code sticker. So I thought that was really, really interesting as well. That's fantastic. All right, guys, this is some really good stuff. We'll, um, 
We'll, what we'll do is we'll record that. We've, uh, you know, the uh, chamber has a brand new YouTube channel. So we're putting all these on our YouTube channel. So we'll get everybody out there and we'll move, out, uh, we'll move this stuff out quickly. Um, let me share my screen again right here and just let everybody know that uh, we do have two more in this series. Our next one is next Thursday where we'll talk about PPE in the workplace. And then on June 2nd, uh, we'll be talking about creating a healthy work environment. So um, 